On today's show, I have a very rare Sony CFS 6000, which is a boombox that features an auto reverse cassette deck with Dolby and AM stereo, which is the only boombox with a cassette that Sony made that had AM stereo and FM stereo. This unit is like new and the tape deck has never been used. We're going to service it today. One of the prime reasons I built the AM stereo transmitter was so that I could utilize some of my old radios like this. AM stereo sounds fantastic. Width and wide band, so there's normal. So this, there's nothing wrong with the radio on this, but where there is a problem is that the tape deck is not working. So first things first, I'll take the speakers off it and take the unit apart so we can see what's wrong with the tape deck. It's going to need a belt for sure pretty much guaranteed it's going to need a belt or two and I have a collection of belts now so I should have the right size belt to get this thing working as you can see the AM stereo modes it supports is the Harris Magnavox and the Motorola compatible system in the A mode and the Can Hazeltine system or Hazeltine system in the B so this supports both and it could operate off of batteries which this has never had batteries in it six I think it's D cell batteries this thing takes yeah six D cells so you know on batteries this thing's gonna last for quite a while and of course AC has detachable speakers so let's start by removing the speakers again something that's probably never been off on this thing is these speakers just release those little clips and the speakers slide right off so we'll remove the speakers it was nice because you can separate the speakers if you were using this as a bookshelf system, for example. It came with a fair bit of speaker wire that you could uh, string them up and hang them up and set the unit on a shelf. Also, on the unit, it had inputs and outputs on the back here. What were these here? It had external microphone inputs and it has a line input. So, Something like this, I could plug a Bluetooth adapter in and make this into a Bluetooth radio if I wanted. Uh, I should replace the antenna that has been missing off this thing for a while. I probably have a whip around here I can put on here if I can remember where I did with it. I'm pretty sure I've got a couple whips around here. We'll get that whipped back into shape. So what happens, I have something that will work quite nicely, I believe. Let's just uh, try replacing I don't know if this is going to fit or not. Maybe it won't fit. Hmm, will this fit or will it not? I have a feeling this is not going to fit properly. Maybe I can make it fit. Hmm. What do you think? I think that might go in there. I might be in luck. I do believe that that will work. This was actually a microphone holder for like an ECM type microphone. These uh, Sony, uh, I've got a bunch of them here, uh, Sony ECM uh, condenser mics, wired condenser mics. In the case that you stored them in, they had this little holder that you could clip the mic in so that if you didn't want to wear the mic, you could use it as a desk microphone. But I got a bunch of them, so that will function perfectly as an antenna and it'll hold a microphone too on the top but that will clip in there quite nicely just like that when it's not in use okay let's um, get this thing apart and uh, fix the tape deck so there's a couple screws that have to come out there's uh, one screw here one screw here two more down here and there's probably one no there's not 
there's not one in the battery compartment which is unusual because usually they had a screw in the battery compartment so we'll just open the compartment so that we don't damage anything because that's a mistake that a lot of people make is that they open the door up they don't open the cassette they don't release the cassette first and then they yank the thing out and the next thing you know they're breaking the eject lever and I've certainly done that before you don't want to do that on a deck of this vintage look at all the dirt in this thing this thing's probably never had a tape in it you know and all the time I've owned this thing I doubt that I've played many if any tapes on it now I gotta take out the deck because I want to get to the back side here so a couple more screws looks to be one two three more screws and then I can get to the back of the deck and get to the belts which is what I got to replace with pretty certain that the belts are going to need to be replaced on this nice thing about this deck is it's an auto reverse between this and that RX DS20 um, couple of the nicer of the portables of the era kind of like this one though because it's got that unique AM stereo band on it and this also has Dolby Dolby noise reduction I think uh, does it yeah, it has Dolby yeah this one has Dolby see the, see the button here this button up here is Dolby so it's got Dolby noise reduction Dolby B but Dolby nevertheless okay the deck should actually lift out now as you can see this unit has never been serviced the original wire ties are still in place which is something that when I service things generally didn't go back in and I'll be able to lift this little indicator that indicates which direction the tape is turning now this is the beauty of Sony unlike other brands these things were really well made and they were designed to be serviced I mean how many other decks can you think of that you could just pull the whole deck out like this and have nice long wires so that you can service it very few I'm going to replace both of these belts I've got the, the main drive belt and I've got the capstan belt as you can see they are very very loose but I have a set of belts so let's change them to take the belts out we need to loosen off this screw here. Get the right size screwdriver. A stolen screwdriver. Lifted from a guy named Peter. And it says WST. Hmm. I wonder what WST means. Hmm. Somebody from somebody named Peter from a company called WST lost a screwdriver. I found this. Okay. Years and years ago, probably 20 years ago, I found this just lying at the side of the road. <laughs> Finders keepers. Okay, I'm just gonna. Lift this out of here carefully. I don't want to break any plastic. So we'll lift that out like that. And then we'll push the idler in place and lift this out of the way. Now I can access the belts directly. Here's one belt here. That one comes off. And the other belt wraps around both of these flywheels. And this is really loose. So we'll remove this belt. And it just goes around one flywheel like that and around the other flywheel the other way. Now I have to go and match these up. I, I, these belts actually would be a candidate for boiling because they're not gooey. I could boil these belts and that would return the elasticity on these belts and I could use them. But because I've got a package of belts, I'm gonna replace them with new ones. You gotta be kidding. 35 belts in a belt pack and none of them are the right size. Um, I might have some that are relatively close to the smaller belt this one here will probably be okay for this belt but for the larger belt I've got nothing that is even remotely close there's belts that are 
way too big and belts that are the closest one I've got is this one here and as you can see that is nowhere near what it needs to be um, it's a little bit bigger than that one but this one's probably going to be okay for this but this belt here this is the original one here this replacement one as you can see it's a little bit smaller which is what I want but for the capstan belt that's uh, I'm going to be putting one on that's uh, going to be really pulling quite tight on here which is probably not what we want for the capstan so I think what I'll do on this one is I'm going to actually boil this belt and see how this works out we'll replace this one this is the one that needs all the torque right to change the directions and stuff and fast forward and rewind but I'm going to boil this one and uh, we'll see how it works because I just don't have a belt that's the size of that one I wish I did but uh, you know out of all these belts you get all these different sizes and nothing is uh, nothing's close right like even this one here see how much smaller that is so yeah it's uh, we'll boil this one and see what happens for the heck of it I'm gonna boil this one too we'll see how the shape returns on this and see how much smaller it makes it if I gotta run the microwave for 15 minutes to boil one I might as well do two so here are the two old belts that I boiled lots of elasticity back on these two now I am going to replace the this one I'll replace the one that was on here with a new belt because I have one but I have to put the original capstan drive belt back on because I don't have one I don't have one that's close enough for this so we'll just lift this wheel out of here that's the clutch by the way so that I can thread this around and then it goes around this side of the, the pulley and it actually has to go underneath this mechanism here and around the, the back of the motor I'm not on the pulley properly here yet okay that's there and I'm going to thread it around the remainder of the pulley here Didn't go where I wanted it, but we'll do try that again. That's better. Yeah, that's a little more torque than it had before. We'll put the drive this is the clutch assembly make sure you don't lose this bushing this goes back in here like that and I have the new belt which is the smaller one here I'll put the new belt in like that now I can put on the retainer assembly and it fits back into these two grooves here see I don't even have to re-grease this because this thing's never been used all the years I had this thing I never ever used the tape deck on it cool huh and goes like that ok 
Okay, spring goes back on where it came off here, which is right in this hole here. That's used to operate. I think that's the auto reverse mechanism. So the spring pops in here. Oh, come on. There. Now the mechanism's ready to go back together. So we'll turn it around here. Probably wouldn't hurt to uh, just put a little bit of lubricant down into the, the bearings here. There's no wear at all. Have you ever seen a, a record play head, a four channel head, that looks in as good a shape as this? Yes, I, I realize that there's dust on this. You have to appreciate this thing's never had a tape in it. In all the years I've owned it, I've just used this as a radio. That's all I've ever used it as. I bought it as an AM stereo radio, and that's all I've ever used it as, as, as an AM FM. Usually AM stereo. So I'm just going to get my oil. We'll just put a drop of oil in here. I'm going to use it, just a little dropper to put a little, just a little drop of oil in there, and it'll wick right into that bearing. That uh, should do it. Put the deck back in and we'll check it for operation and make sure it works. I think one of those blood suckers got me. Sit there like that. Turn this thing to tape. Okay, that's tape there. Now we'll try the different modes. Fast forward. Let's fast forward. I guess it doesn't have auto stop. Fast forward. Rewind. That works. Play. And if this thing's set for reverse mode, where's the reverse mode on this thing? There's a button in here to reverse it. I think this is the button to reverse it. Yeah, that's the reversing button, you see. And it should automatically... There you go. Tape gets to the end, it stops. Yeah, see? It's a mechanical auto-reverse. That works. Excellent. Let's, uh, we'll put the front cover on. Actually, I don't even have to do that to play it. I can operate this thing with it apart so we can test it out. We'll just hook up the speakers. Okay, I've got my 440 hertz tone tape. Now, this has never been touched. Let's see how accurate this thing is. It's never been touched. The speed has never been calibrated. This unit has never been played. Let's uh, see how close this thing is. Sounds pretty darn close to me. What do we got here on the uh, frequency counter? Oh, I think that's close enough. I'm not going to worry about that. We're right bang on. This unit's never been touched. That shows that the deck I recorded this on, which is my quartz lock, 
The deck I recorded this on is my Quartz Lock uh, RSM 275 with the direct drive capstan, no belts, and it it was certified years and years ago using a cert certification tape. It, it's never had to be adjusted because it was exactly on uh, frequency, and that's what I've used to record my test tone tapes with. And as you can see. This thing is almost perfect. This thing's in like new condition. Well, it should be because this uh, this tape deck, this this recorder has never been used. As I say, I've never listened to tapes on this, but now I can because it's got new belts. So let's um, let's try test recording. I can actually record on this thing off the radio, of course. I've got some blank tapes I can record on. So let's see how well this unit records. I think a 30 odd year old new cassette deck it just deserves a brand new never been opened Fuji Type 1 normal DR 60 minute cassette it's almost a, it's almost a crime to open this up but a new tape deck deserves a new tape And this is new old stock. We'll load it there. Let's uh, get some tunes. What do I want here? Yeah. AM stereo. Why not? Record. I don't know if the record switch needs to be cleaned or anything on this. Well, kick off. I think the Dolby's on there. What, what switch is which? Yeah, that's the Dolby on. this and play and we'll do a one-off FM as well is it live or is it Fuji let's try FM I'll give you the same thing on FM. Because I have the same thing. Okay. There's the. Whoops, what am I doing here? It sounds better on AM than it does on FM. I have the same source going to both my little 5 milliwatt FM transmitter and my AM stereo transmitter. It works. Everything works on here, as you can see when it's in the reverse direction. The uh, little light changes the opposite direction here, and the tape goes the opposite way. Oh, oh yeah, here's something else that this has that uh, it's a really kind of a cool feature on it. I say this was a really good, a really good blaster. And it, watch this. It 
it has AMS cueing. Oh, before I put this together, let's just check the volume controls and stuff. I think we can probably do it. Yeah, I think these controls should be clean, so let me get some cleaner in here and then we'll put it together. Since I have direct access to the controls, I'll just give them a shot of D, Deox at D100. Best cleaner for cleaning controls. Give it, give it a one shot. And same with the volume control. Give this one a shot. I don't need the a high pressure version because I can get that right into the control. We'll do the same for all the uh, tone controls here. the controls themselves look down from the top it's just carbon on the back of a board here for these controls so I'm right into the control and here's a demo of the Dolby noise reduction Dolby on be off definitely it does have Dolby not a pretend Dolby like some devices have okay time to put the front cover back on so I have to make sure I hold up the the forward reverse direction button and I should be able to just slide the whole front face back onto this thing it should just drop on I don't think I have to take the speakers off to do this it should just drop in place if I'm lucky There. There, that's better. Now the screws can go back in it. I'll hold the front on until I get a, a, one or two screws threaded in here. This unit might get a Bluetooth board added to it at some date, too. Um, if I get my hands on another line out Bluetooth board. This one would be a perfect candidate to put it in. Go check out the uh, radio tuner in this thing. Okay, that's FM. We'll go down to AM. And we'll look at the uh, AM band and see how it is. I have it in wide band here, so we'll see what we get. I'm going to get a lot of static on AM for sure. That's my, my test transmitter. Sounds good. Confident. I 
experience. In the NHL playoffs, West Final over in Winnipeg went to the Jets, 4-2 over Vegas. NASCAR and FS1 tonight to Kevin... They're looking really good right now. No problems on the Portman, Patello, or Alex Fraser. The Red Sox tied to Marco Estrada, five Ks, but he also left. I'm in normal bandwidth, not wide band. That's wide band. Today against the Tigers in the first. Or since the waterways began to rise with melting snow pads. <laughs> There's nothing else. We'll go back up to my transmitter. I go to wide band. Sounds pretty good. If I tune something else on there, I can tune other stations. I My uh, AM stereo transmitter, I have an FM tuner on there, so I can just put anything through. So I can listen. To, I don't have to listen to the royalty-free stuff on my... I only have it on now because I'm doing a video, but normally I can put other stuff on. So let me put another station on there so you can hear how it sounds. So here's a commercial FM station playing through an AM stereo transmitter. <laughs> Okay, that's all I can play of that, but it does sound really good. You guys probably remember that little gadget. That's the FM tuner that I was sent to evaluate, and that's what I use that for. And that just goes into my AM stereo transmitter, which transmits on 1440 in the Motorola CQAM uh, uh, format, which is compatible with all the Motorola systems, including the ones that Sony had. And I just use that to, to put whatever I want. Just usually, just, usually just pick up another station and uh, send it over my AM transmitter to my various collectible AM radios because I've got quite the collection of vintage radios. i got several AM stereo radios. In fact, there's my AM stereo tuner that's sitting up there on the shelf. I'm not currently... I don't currently have that one hooked up. But... Um, it's there for when I want to hook it up again. And I got some other stuff up here that I got to be looking at, like some cameras and stuff that uh, will be coming up in future videos that I haven't got to yet. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video overhauling my old CFS 6000. Definitely a very collectible boombox. And it's now fully functional. Records and plays, auto reverse works, AMS works, Dolby works, AM stereo and FM stereo works. Great little unit if you can find one of these things. These are certainly collectible units and these days they command top dollars because there are not a lot of them around and the one I've got here is uh, in about as good a shape as you're ever going to find one of these in. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.